Hello, I'm Joe Paiva, and this is part two of state plane coordinates. It's an introduction to the concept of state plane coordinates, and uh, here we have a series, so this is part two of the series, and in this series we're going to cover the overview of the concepts, talk especially about projections and how they work and the concept of scale differences. We will talk about how the mathematics operates rather than the mathematics itself. So we, we're not going to have a lot of equations. We'll have a few simple ones, but most of them will not be extremely complex. We leave it to the software that you typically use to, to do that. We'll talk about some practical applications in the field, in the office, and in communicating state plane coordinates with your team or with people outside of your organization. And we're going to stress in this series the understanding of the theory and the, and the mathematics used in the system so that you can really understand if the coordinates actually represent what they are intended to represent. So in this particular course, course number two, uh, we will uh, review first of all some of the projection information so that we can uh, leapfrog from there into the other material. So in the first course, we talked about cylindrical and conic projections. Uh, we talked about developing the surface, that is, not the ground surface, but the cylinder or the cone's surface. And then we'll talk about, uh, we talked about how to go from the ellipsoid to the developable surface. Developable surface, if you remember, is a cylinder or a cone which can be slit along its length and then laid out flat. And this is the mathematical operation that occurs when you do compute the state plane coordinates of points. <coughs> and finally, where are the distortions and how do you characterize them? Um, and I'll explain in this course as well as in the next one what I mean by characterizing them because that is an important part of being able to understand how state plane coordinates work. So we had this diagram in the earlier course and I'll repeat it here. You probably see it many more times, but this is the concept of a secant cylinder. That's the, uh, the blue, uh, blue cylinder that intersects the surface of the earth so that it is secant. And I have a cylinder where we are projecting objects on the surface of the earth to the cylinder, and you see on the uh, developed cylinder, so this is the cylinder after it has been slit and laid out flat, you can see the points that have been projected onto it. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about, a little bit more about that as we move on through. Now in the previous cylinder I had its axis coincidence with the, coincident with the Earth's spin axis. In state plane coordinates when we talk about Mercator, we're actually talking about transverse Mercator where the axis of the cylinder is perpendicular to the spin axis of the Earth. So here I have shown in, in a different representation that same cylinder and how it punches through the Earth and that is why by definition it is secant. It cuts through the Earth rather than just touch it at the north and south poles. 